is like almost 40,000 BTU or something like that. You know, it's backlit daytime and nighttime and it's digital as well. So it's analog. All right, so we got everything made exactly how this diagram is. Welcome to the Auto Less YouTube channel. And if you're new here, we're currently working on my 1200 horsepower capable BMW X6M, also named Sasha. And we're also at Infinite Audio. If, you all, if you've been watching the videos, you know I came here, this is my buddy shop. We installed the meth kit here at Infinite Audio. You know, let me pop this back here. We did the full meth kit and wiring here at Infinite Audio. You know, ran the relays, wiring, everything here. You know, this is a car audio shop. And this how good and good and quality work this guy does. You know, we're doing power, power mods at a car audio shop. But today is not about the meth. Today is about the world's first, I mean the world's first ever in the world, hyper cool transmission setup on a BMW, you know, probably on any European car. So I'm gonna go in the shop and break down all the parts that's gonna make this stage two pure drivetrain transmission cool as it can be when she's handling 1400 horsepower and 1200 foot pounds of torque for what it's rated at. So we actually got a lot of stuff that we're doing. You know, half of this stuff will be done at Boosted Beamers like the uh coolant lines and stuff like that well the uh oil lines and stuff like that but all the wiring and getting everything wired up we're gonna do that here today and the only thing we have to wire is this fan switch which tells the fans when to turn on at the correct time and also the uh the wiring for this uh max tote double vision trans temp gauge and here it's analog and digital so there's no confusion about what's going on and this is these are actually the most accurate temp gauges you can buy you know max toe in my opinion so let's get this unboxed all right so first and foremost we're going to get to the beans which is the Dorelli hyper cool and for this thing to be so small, if you read any reviews on this thing, I'm gonna have, well first, I'm gonna have the part numbers and links for where everybody can buy any of this stuff. So if you wanna do this same kit on my type of car or any other type of car, you can do this same kit. You might need different fittings and stuff like that, but most of this is, uni this is a universal kit because I'm the first one to do this on a BMW. So, you know, it should be able to fit on any car. Like I said, so any car with the ZF transmission. So first is the cooler itself. I'm gonna unbox that and show you this. This thing is tiny, but mighty. I think it's like almost 40,000 BTU or something like that. So that's crazy. And it comes with 100% waterproof, weatherproof, uh fans these fans are completely sealed so we don't have to worry about anything like that like water splash because this is a remote cooler this cooler is not meant to be mounted in the front of the vehicle this cooler is meant to be mounted when you don't have space in the front as we don't you know as most bmws don't so we're mounting this in the rear somewhere like uh by a rocker panel i meant by a, a side skirt up in that area or in the back where the muffler used to be because I, that car straight pipe is no muffler and it's a big cool section that where the exhaust opens up. I'm gonna show you a picture right here what it looks like. We might just mount it in there. So, and this is a, I think a 19 year old stack plate cooler and this is like the best thing for a racing transmission. So this should get it really cool. Next, we got from Improved Racing. 
I think I told you guys about this on a different video, but if this your first time uh, being on the channel, then you never seen this. And this is a inline thermostat. And it's a 100, 165 degree thermostat. At 165 degrees, the, the internal thermostat starts to open. And at, uh, I think 170, 175 or something like that, it's fully open to the cooler. And it has the ins and out, and it comes with either, uh, where it has the end to the cooler and out from the cooler. Uh, indentations on there, well, it's written in, I think it's like kind of in, yeah, they kind of got it, uh, you know, inscribed in there. It's like milled into the uh, aluminum. But yeah, it comes with either AM fittings or your choice of bar fittings. We went with bar because that's the way the uh, stock system is set up with quick connects or bar. So that's the way we're going to run this for ease of use. You know, so. And that'll stop me from having to use the factory system for, uh, for the thermostat. Yo, yo, somebody popping up. Next is, this is one of the most important parts of the system itself here. And as you can see, let me give you a good look at that. This is from HPR. And what this does is since we're eliminating the entire factory system for the uh, transmission cooler, the factory system for the transmission cooler, we're deleting the lines as well and the in and out plug into the side of the ZF transmission. This takes that place, as you can see, and they come with different uh, different size uh, little spacers with O-rings on them, depending on what car you got. Uh, the Jag, Range Rover, BMW, any car with the ZF transmission, they make these brackets so they can fit, you know, and uh, these uh, ports here are actually 360 degree movable. So we're mounting it in the back. So it usually mounts on the transmission like this with the factory lines and go directly to the front. But with our system, we're gonna be having it all the way back going towards the back of the car. So these are gonna be all the way back mounted towards the back of the car. Cause as you can see, they turn 360 degrees. And that'll be that'll let us be able to mount this remote cooler all the way in the back. So that's that. And this is from HPR Performance. So I'm gonna put this back up and show you guys what else we got in this custom transmission cooler kit. So next we have a slew of fittings, uh, bar fittings, and AN fittings. You know, I'm not gonna tell you exactly which ones these are because nine times out of ten if they don't fit if, if you have a different car or a different setup or using a different cooler setup these my fittings won't fit on your car anyways but these fittings are just to you know be able to run the lines from the transmission to the cooler and uh here i will show you these though hold on let me get the other one out yeah it's a 10 a.m. that goes directly from the cooler and that will have the water temp gauge uh, sensor in here. Well, the fan temp sensor in here that turns the fan on and this one will be coming directly from the transmission off of the HPR as you see here. Screw that on. That'll be coming directly off of the transmission. Let me screw this on so I can show you. That'll be coming directly off of the transmission and that'll have the transmission temp gauge for the uh, max toe temperature gauge, that temp sensor. So we can keep an eye on the temperature of the transmission fluid to make sure that all this stuff is doing the job. But I will let, have a link for where you can buy these, you know, because these are definitely like mandatory to if you're using inline sensors. A few moments later. All right, so we got everything made exactly how this diagram is. I already had a relay back here already for the MELF kit and the stage three fuel, uh, low pressure fuel pump. 
So all we did is we added another relay because I have three things running to that other relay already. So we added one more relay, fused it, fused it at the battery here, and then ran this fused wire here. This wire will go down through this grommet here, leads to the outside. And that this will go down and connect to the switch power on this switch here. Well, this fan turn on switch since it's already switch power on that fuse right there so that's good but for the temp gauge transmission temperature gauge what i'm gonna do is modify this cubby hole here for that to sit in it like most of the guys do their meth gauges but my meth gauge is up here so it's gonna when i open that up it's gonna be sitting right in there like that you know, so we finna go ahead and modify that and hook this wiring up. Alright, so we almost done and we got all the wires ran. This here, like I told you before, is for the fan turn on switch. It's all oxygen free copper to go since it's going to be ran outside through that grommet. And this here is for the the temp sending unit for the gauge up front it still has to be spliced in because we had to uh extend the wires from the front to the rear and we had to extend the gauge pod wires from the front to the rear because as you know in the bmw is only two fuse boxes in it and it's hard to find constant power up front unless you want to go back through the firewall grommet and use the jumpers up front and i didn't want to do that so we just ran every we extended the entire all four of the gauge pod wires all the way to the back loomed them up and then we're just going to use the fuse box in the back with the new uh relay we just installed the relay for the meth kit the third fuel pump and the inner chiller is here and this this uh relay here adjusts before those temp senders in the gauge i'm going to show you what we did for the gauge and it's gorgeous the way he got it set up so See, he actually put it in that like cubby hole. So when I'm sitting down, you know, I can have it right. Well, on camera, it doesn't look like it's visible, but because the angle I got to hold it, but it, it, it's super visible. And that's a lighted gauge. So it's, uh, you know, it's backlit daytime and nighttime and it's digital as well. So it's analog and digital. You know, and it closes just like factory opens. And the reason why I don't have all of this stuff on camera is because this is what he does. And I don't want to be all in his way trying to record, you know, so every time he finished something, I put that on camera. But I don't want to have the camera all on the man back while he's dealing with this wiring. So, uh, yeah, we finna get this finished and then I'll let you guys see what it looks like. The next day. That looks real nice. So it's actually the next day because once we got all the wiring figured out and the wiring done and the gauge pot put in and all of that stuff, it started to rain horribly. And if you're from Florida, you ever been to Florida, you know how unpredictable the rain is, especially during summertime. Yeah, the gauge turned out gorgeous. You know, it's in the spot where I wanted it. You know, it, it's like a little stealth thing, you know, like if I don't always want to see it, I don't have to see it. Let me uh, hold on, adjust this camera. Okay. If I don't want to see it, I don't have to see it because it's in a cubby hole. I can just keep the cubby hole closed and boom, you know, I, I won't have to worry about it. So, uh, yeah. So as of now, you know, we the only thing we have left to do is install the actual where is it oh it's back here in the back install the actual transmission cooler itself and run the lines and fittings and i'm gonna do a separate video on that so you guys can see exactly how you use that uh ultimate tca adapter i think that is for what it's what it's called from hpr so you can see exactly how you use that and where we're gonna you know try to run this 
this uh actual cooler at you know because it's a remote cooler so but up under bmw there's only so many places you can put something like that so i'm thinking right where the muffler used to be because the exhaust is out around the side so it's just a big space right in the middle you know we're gonna put like probably an inch or half inch uh standoffs on it so it could drop it a little bit you know from the factory it has its own like little i think about a quarter inch or something like that but i want more fresh airflow to be able to come through so we're gonna do something like that but yeah and and i mean we're almost there you know and then we can go ahead and get it tuned but i still have to like if you didn't see the last video like i told you i had an injector problem and i swapped that problem injector out but if you know bmw injector problems that one injector isn't gonna do it you know so I need to switch all of the injectors out, get all brand new injectors so I don't, you know, because when one's going bad, they're going to keep going bad. It's like a cancerous tree, you know, one branch dies, the next branch is going to die and the next branch is going to die. So I'm going to swap them all out and I don't think I need plugs and coils already, but I'm just going to do those anyways, you know, just so it's no problem with my fuel and ignition for when we get on the dyno. So on the next video, we're gonna be installing this transmission cooler setup. You know, get everything plumbed up right, looking gorgeous, heating and cooling right, you know. So this transmission lasted an extremely long time because it was extremely expensive. And I want it to last a long time. So like, share, and subscribe, and auto lust out.